Hey guys, so this is post-production, but I just want to tell you guys that there's a ton of information in this video, and you need to watch the whole thing to truly get the most out of this guide. If you're just watching steps and skipping steps, then you're going to miss some valuable information. So on February 8th, the Revenant drop table was buffed, and the new drops are very, very good. Players can make over 4 million GP per hour, as you're going to see in some footage in a minute of me making over 4 million GP in an hour. And the thing is, though, you do need some pretty high level requirements. So without further ado, let's jump on into those. So really, I guess the only big requirement is 89 agility. And you're going to be like, Mac, nobody has 89 agility, dude. We don't all sit and, you know, jab around obstacles all day. And my counter to that is then you're not going to be able to make 4 mil an hour. If you're 89 agility, you can use the agility obstacle to the west of the Dark Beast, which basically allows you to evade teams all the time. And if you're not 89 agility, then every time that you run into a team, you're going to have to teleport or attempt to log out. And basically, if you teleport, you're just wasting time going back to the spot. And furthermore, I do want to mention that if you don't have 89 agility, it's also harder getting into the spot I'm about to show you. So what to bring? So the first thing I want to talk about is the Salve Amulet E and the Salve Amulet EI. So if you're meleeing, you're going to bring the Salve Amulet E. If you're ranging, uh, you can bring the Salve Amulet EI. And the Salve Amulet E increases the melee accuracy and damage by 20% against the undead. Since revs are undead, it works here. And the Salve Amulet EI does the same thing, except it's for range and magic. But I do want to exercise a little bit of caution when bringing these. And that's because if you lose them, especially the Salve Amulet EI, you've just wasted 800k Nightmare Zone points. So basically when you're bringing these, especially the Salve Amulet EI, you just have to make sure that it protects over the items that you're bringing. The second thing that you want to bring is a looting bag. And you're like, Mac, I don't want to bring a looting bag because I'm going to keep dying and I'm going to have to keep getting it. But this is what you need to do. You need to go in the Edgeville dungeon and you need to kill thugs. It takes approximately five minutes to get a looting bag. The chance of getting a looting bag from a wilderness monster is one in 30. Uh, wilderness monsters are of course the only monsters you can get them from. So uh, thugs are really easy to kill and you're gonna get one fairly quickly. Now the reason why you wanna bring a looting bag is because revenants drop three items that will protect over your salve amulet EI and that's not good. You obviously don't want to waste 800k nightmares on points. So those three items are dragon plate legs, the dragon plate skirt, as well as the dragon longsword. Those are the three items that you need to be watchful of. And obviously then of course like all the, the higher end drops uh, like the statuettes and things like that. So if you get one of those drops then you need to immediately put it in your looting bag and if you put it in your looting bag, then you're actually not risking that item anymore ahead of the Salve Amulet E. You're risking the looting bag, which doesn't protect over the Salve Amulet E. So it's actually kind of like a cool, not like glitch, but just like a roundabout way to protect your Salve Amulet E instead. So the third item that I recommend is the Royal Seed Pod. You get this upon completion of the Monkey Madness 2 quest. And you want to bring this because it's one-click teleport. It works in up to level 30 wilderness. You can additionally uh, use an Amulet of Glory. But since you're using the Salve Amulet E or Salve Amulet EI, that Glory is going to be in your inventory, which means it's going to be a little bit harder to teleport, especially when a team comes. The fourth thing that you need to bring is a Bracelet of Ethereum. So basically what you need to do is you need to buy Revenant Ethers as well and put those in the Bracelet of Ethereum. This is because the Revenant Ethers protect you from the Revenants and allow the Revenants not to hit you when you're wielding it. And the Bracelet of Ethereum also has a handy dandy toggle option that allows you to collect Ethers from each Revenant every time you kill them. So you want to make sure that that's set to on. Alright, so this is the strategy. So here's your teleport line. Basically, if you're anywhere to the north of this line, then you're not going to be able to teleport. If you're to the south of the line, then you can teleport. So basically what that leaves us is a Dark Beast, an Orc, a Cyclops, and a Hobgoblin. So basically um, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to work these four. And occasionally you can work a Pyre Fiend up here. So there's like three or four good cannon spots. I typically use the Orc cannon spot, which is right here, and this allows a double hit on the Orc. The other good one um, is the double hit Dark Beast. Uh, basically, you line it up somewhere around here, and you're going to get a double Dark Beast hit. And the other one I've seen is people put cannons somewhere around here, and you don't get any double hits, but you get one and one. So they're basically getting a cannon hit uh, on top of their own DPS. Um, and sometimes, but not often, I'll see someone put a cannon up here. I'm not sure if you can get a double hit on the orc if it's up here, but this one also hits this, 
uh, and it hits these, and I believe it also hits tonight. So, I, I mean, this one, that the fourth one, I don't highly recommend that one because uh, you're really flirting with the line on a lot of these things. Alright, so now for the inventory and the gear setup. So I'm not going to tell you that you have to bring exactly all this stuff, but this is just a rough idea. So I'm bringing a helmet with me. It's not a Sav Amulet EI. Avis accumulator, my blowpipe, black dehyde body, black dehyde chaps, snakeskin boots, very set of Ethereum, and a ring of dueling. And I'm also using adamant darts. And then here's my inventory. So I'm using two restore potions. So you can substitute those repair potions. One stamina potion, one ranging potion, your cannon, and then five angler fish, four karamwans. I use uh, seven manta rays. You can substitute those for sharks. About 300 cannonballs, your looting bag, your royal seed pod, and the burning amulet four, which is going to be used to teleport you there. And also, just one last thing, I don't recommend melee. You can bring it if you want, if you have an elder mall uh, or a god sword. But the blowpipe is the best. Clipper was using an Elder Maw for like the last three days. He switched to a blowpipe and he says he's getting way more kills with the blowpipe. Um, as you can see here, blowpipe is better. So I highly recommend using a blowpipe. But by all means, you can use melee. Just make sure that when you're doing the uh, items kept on death, that you're obviously keeping your Sav Amulet EI. Yeah, I'm not right this second, but that's all right. I'm not too worried about it. So, and then the other thing I didn't tell you, if you are bringing a cannon and you're nervous about losing it, I'm not nervous because I've been doing this for so long and I'm pretty good at avoiding PKers, but if you are nervous and it's your first time, basically just bank all of your gear and then just go with your cannon, you drop your cannon, uh, don't even bring cannonballs, just drop your cannon there, get a feel for the area and then bank and gear up and then you can go. Um, so that's how I recommend doing it if it's your first time. So before you begin, what you wanna do is you want to eat an angler fish to get to your max HP uh, and then this is the parts that's going to vary between players so if you're not 89 agility what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to teleport to the lava maze and you're going to want to head down and this is a pretty risky method definitely a lot riskier than the second method if you are 89 agility because uh, you're going to have to work your way down through the cave and a lot of teams go to the north of the cave which stinks so basically you run east here, you're going to run, run east of the green dragons and then there's going to be a cave entrance right here. You're going to go in the cave entrance and you're going to head south. Be wary of some PKers at the cave entrance, there is none right now. So basically all you're going to do is you're going to head south and the revenants are right here. So you're going to follow the path right there and then through there, remember the well the wilderness teleport line somewhere around there so um that's not the best method uh to do it obviously the best is heading north into the cave but that requires 89 agility and i'm going to show you guys that right now if you do have 89 agility all you're going to do is you're going to teleport to the bandit camp instead uh, this takes you to level 17 wilderness and this is by far the better of the two methods so you're going to head a little bit east here and there is going to be a dungeon entrance right here Gonna make your way inside past the hellhounds and then past the green dragons you can turn protect from magic on use a sip of your stamina potion if you need it head northeast past the graders and you get to the 89 agility obstacle right now Perfect. So every time you're hopping worlds, I highly recommend come here. As you can see, someone's getting clobbered right here. This allows you to see teams. And most of these people don't have 89 agility, so they can't get you anyway. Um, but this is a good spot to hop and uh, just look at like how many people are in the spot. So in this spot, you see that there is uh, three cannons. So it's probably not the best spot. So we're just going to hop around until we find a good world. Right, so this looks like a pretty good spot. So uh, this is going to be live commentary. Sorry for any mistakes that happen, but I'm going to do this the best that I can. So after you cross the bridge like I just did, basically what you're wanting, going to want to do is I use this spot right here. And this allows the double hit on the orc. So I'm going to set my cannon right there. And uh, now my cannon is fully set. And I can quickly take a look and see that my Sav Amulet EI is now being protected, which is good. 
So we're just gonna get going. So what I basically do is I try to get as many kills as possible. So if that means running away from one to get another, then that's what it has to be. So uh, if you wanna, if my spot is taken, another good spot is cannoning right here. You put your cannon right here, you get the double hit on the Revenant uh, beast. And then, like I said uh, earlier, this is an okay spot. Um, that's what this guy's doing right here. It's gonna hit to the north, and I think he's only gonna get one hit, not the double hit on the south. Um, so if you watch mine, I should get a double hit there. Yep, there's a double hit, and uh, that should be mine. Yep. So dragon longsword. So perfect. So this is gonna give you a great example of exactly what happens. So now the dragon longsword protects over the salve ammo on the yacht, and that's not what you want. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna use the dragon longsword in the looting bag. So now, if you look at that, you're losing the looting bag, and you're also losing the dragon longsword, your salve ammo EI is saved. And that's basically what you need to be weary of and why you want the looting bag. So the other good spot to put the cannon is somewhere around me right now. I think it's right here. And the reason why you want to put it here, like I already mentioned, is it's going to hit this one, and it's also going to hit this guy. Uh, so you can work that spot pretty well. It's best to find a world where this person isn't here. Although they're getting a single cannon hit, it just makes it hard for you to get kills because they're still getting a hit too but now it's cleared out and I got all these for myself so let the feast and begin some runite ore uncut dragonstone the loops man 115 Tallied. more runeidor and now you guys start to see how it's so much money per hour see the cannon there uh, i put it in the wrong spot but you see this guy he's not geared uh he's placing his cannon or he's gonna place his cannon and he's gonna go back and uh hop and grab or he's gonna go back and bank and then grab all this stuff um, so that's a smart play for him. That's what I was saying to you guys. If you guys don't want to risk uh, your items, then do that. It just takes a little bit more time. I want to give you guys one more good example before I end this guide, though. Ancient Crystal. There we go. There's my very first drop, and it's on the freaking guide. Thank the dear Lord that I got it. I don't want to end the guide yet. I want to show you guys um, a team coming and me dodging him because they don't have that footage yet. Right, so I want to convince you guys why you should get 89 agility. So in this first clip, you see a TB or Murray 1991. He TBs me, but he doesn't have 89 agility. I go over the gap, and he realizes that he can't get me, so I'm safe. Even though I'm teleblocked, I can still chill out here, and I'm good to go. In the second clip, you see a team rushing from the north, and I see them quickly. I put my range uh, protection prayer on, for some reason they don't attack me at first, I try to get the other guy, but then I realized that that guy got out, so then I wanted to quickly grab my coal because I'm a greedy bastard, and I knew I could dodge these guys anyways, so I just took a little bit of damage, ran to the north, they don't come. Third clip here, you see a tally blocker here, actually gets me with my protection from magic prayer on, a couple more try to pile me, they splash a freeze, and I go south and make it out, they can't get me. And then finally in the fourth clip, you have somebody who sees me over here uh, and decides to try to barrage me, but I just say goodbye. All right, my dudes, I hope this guide helps you. If you want to see any other future PVM guides, be sure to leave whatever you want to see down below in the description. If you're new here, please subscribe. That really helps me and keeps me motivated to make these videos. We'll see you guys for the next video soon. Take care.